And I'm going to share with you what's on my wish list and what I learned about made to order processes for ready to wear, which I think is really interesting. Welcome to you, my name's Dale, and this is Dale's Addiction. Um, I started my Hermes journey. Ah. <laughs> yes, 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 I did. Now, this video, I'm going to tell you why I have decided to start my journey. What are the things that impacted my thinking? How am I reconciling where I'm at now with my very outspoken and um, consistent view on Hermes and the journey and also the Hermes aesthetic? And yeah, what's on my list? Most importantly, because I've made a wish list. <laughs> so yeah, let's get started. Um, the catalyst for this shift in my attitude toward MS, the journey, and the aesthetic has definitely been this amazing bag that I feel like <laughs> my experience in Paris, um, and if you haven't seen those videos, I'll link them below, but my experience in Paris, um, I'm not a fatalist, but I do believe that there was some kind of fate involved in me being offered this bag, me being with Meredith on this particular day, at this particular time of day, with this particular sales associate. Um, yeah, it was pretty magical um, and overwhelming and all the things. And, and um, if you, you know, watch that video, you'll know that straight afterwards, I'm kind of going, oh, this is a bit weird. And I, I gave money to a, a homeless woman on the street. And I was just, I was very acutely aware of how odd this situation was. I have retained the view that, you know, it is a bag that I could sell if I didn't like it. But the longer I've had it, the more I'm enjoying wearing it. And you might say, well, of course, we could all tell you that. And yep, you have been over the years. It's definitely the colour. It's definitely the colour and the size. You know, would I be saying this if I was offered an, a Taupe 25 with gold hardware? I really don't think so. I, I really don't. Um, I'm consciously catching myself in terms of, you know, what else might you be reneging on in the future, Dale? I really don't. I really think that this kind of shook up my perception of the brand and the products and that there could be something suitable for me. I have to put it down there because it's heavy. So, so I think that that's a big part of it. The... Um, the aesthetic of of MS and um, the Birkin in particular, look, it's still not my favourite. Um, if you were to ask me who makes my favourite bags, it's Fendi. Um, and probably closely followed by Louis Vuitton. They're the ones that I have the most of. Um, and, and then Chanel, but you know, I can't I can't justify buying Chanel anymore. And so that's the same and even going into boutique the last few days and looking at the bags and talking to my sales associate um, and you know updating my wish list when she talked to me about what other bags I might be interested in there really wasn't anything but we'll get to that the journey itself it's funny you know doing the video about <laughs> about the Hermes lawsuit where I argued I argued the perspective of the customer. It did what I think the whole Hermes journey is designed to do. It did what restricting yourself from anything does. It kind of motivated me to become a winner. And I'm like, oh, this is rubbish. How hard can it be? It kind of inspired me to get more interested and and I guess pay respect to the fact that 
again, through their arrogance, and some people say to me, oh, is it arrogance, is it confidence, is it toxic? I'm calling it arrogance. They are attractive in that way. I still walk into boutiques and I walk past the majority of things. I, I, I do struggle with, and I thought, how would I ever participate in a journey when there's just nothing there for me? I watch a lot of videos from my fellow YouTube creators who love Hermes. And I have a lot of friends on Instagram who love Hermes and share their journeys with me. And the aesthetic just doesn't work for me. A lot of the ready-to-wear doesn't work for me. The colors don't work for me. The shapes don't work for me. And so I'm thinking, well, how do, how do I even consider a journey when there's nothing that I want? Then I started to look at what I actually already have from Hermes. And um, I'll, I'll share it with you so you get a gist of some of the things I've picked up without a journey, without a relationship, just popping in and grabbing them. So the first one is part of the Passifolia range. Um, this was being sold on a Facebook site. I cannot remember, I think it was, I think it was Ash from Asset, Ash at Lux. Um, he was the one that told me about the maker's marks on the back of the um, Emma's ceramics and I was like, oh, I went to check it and sure enough, I do have a maker's mark um, and it's a little bunny rabbit and I'll put a picture in because you'll never see it um, if, I <laughs> if I was to put it up to the camera. And I thought, that's pretty cute. I like this because my whole house is covered in these sorts of prints and so when I saw this, and I put little trays in my bathrooms with like um, bath bombs and soaps and little bits and pieces. Um, I thought, oh, well, that's perfect. It fits in with my house and my decor. It just happens to be Hermes. One of my first trips into the boutique here in Brisbane was with Connor from the channel The Closet by Connor. And I did love the fashion jewelry. And I picked up, I still don't know what this is, a click H or a click clack bracelet and it's in rose gold with anyway I thought it went pretty well with my stack I loved it um, I don't wear it that often but when I do wear it I quite enjoy wearing it um, so that one I picked up just literally going in this will make you laugh when I bought my convertible sports car I bought an Hermes scarf which I never wore um, I don't even know if I've got a picture of it maybe I do if I do I'll, I'll pop it in here but I liked the pink color of it. It had a horse. And the idea was that I'd wear it on my head like a, um, like a fabulous 50s um, fashionista when I was driving around with the, uh, with the top down on my car. As if I ever did that. I mean, Connor and I did it once for kicks, but I'd already sold that scarf on. And I did not make any money off it really. I think it was about $750. Yes, it was beautiful. Yes, there was quality in it. But I'm just thinking, how on earth do you style this? Like, it's just it's just not something that I would wear. So that didn't work for me. And every time I see someone open a scarf, and I never, ever see them wearing them, I'm like, yeah, I think they might be a bit of the Birkenbait thing going on. Because, yeah, I, I, I don't see people wearing their scarves, put it that way. But I do have a really cool, um, a really cool insight to share with you about the scarves and made to order pieces, which I will share with you shortly. So I think the next thing I bought was a pair of Aran sandals in the tan. I have two pairs of these. These are the newest pair and they are horrible. My other pair I eventually worn in, they are so soft. I don't think, oh, here they are. <laughs> excuse my French, they're so soft, um, they finally really work for me, but I had to have the soles replaced because I just broke them apart. Actually, even this one here is um, starting to peel off again. So yeah, they, they, oh my God, look, you can see how thin that is. Like I've literally worn them to shreds. Now, there's stitches coming apart from the seams here. Like, they have they worn well? Oh, I don't know. Probably okay, but the amount of pain I went through to wear these babies in, I bought a second pair because I love them. I found them so easy to wear every single day with every outfit, and it's summer here most of the time. 
exactly the same leather a half a size bigger but they are horrible they are so tight and uncomfortable and I've got to go through that wearing in process all over again <sighs> painful for those of us with wider feet but geez they look good once they're worn in <sighs> speaking of painful the legend sandals again no journey just like them pair of gold sandals thought they looked nice on my feet where this is on the outside is where my little toe sits and it is the most horrible sensation when your little toenail of which mine is quite small is constantly flicking off the end of that because it just doesn't fit inside of there and for that reason these are very hard to wear for a long period of time even though they're not high they have very thin wedges as you can see on the bottom so they're not actually the most sturdy um shoes for a wedge and because of the you know the very sharp decline yeah they're not very comfortable and i actually saw mel in melbourne um she did a review a great review on all of the hermes shoe styles she has from her most favorites and least favorite and um, yeah, she didn't rate her wedges either. Okay, then we come to the Oasis, I think. So these have a small heel. These are in like a denim um, fabric with a leather lined interior. I bought these, I think in my, yep, a half size up, 39 and a half. Still not the most comfortable shoes, I have to say, um, for a wide-footed girly. I wear them because I love them. They look great with denim. They're still not fantastically comfortable for me. I'm going to continue to, you know, push through. Beauty is pain, right? Connor and I bought matching pair, and I think he even has difficulty with the sandals that he bought at, from the men's section as well. Just yeah not a lot of comfort in them and don't even don't even suggest to me those shipra sandals that is a no 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 go zone for me i don't do birkenstocks i don't do crocs i don't do those how did i forget my um hermes belt it i believe it's the collier de chin de chin whatever dog collar belt um i picked this one up pre-loved from a consignment store in brisbane that is now only online i think designer archives if they exist at all and it also has this other color on the back i think that might be a toop because it has the contrast stitching look at me and my ms knowledge but i typically wear it on this side with the black and i do not know what that leather is but it's very very heavy I do like how thin it is. It looks great with some of my dresses. Um, I've not worn it with pants. I don't know if it's like the kind of belt you'd wear with pants. I haven't even tried. I totally forgot about it, obviously. So um, yeah, here it is. Beautiful. And finally, I picked these up of Facebook Marketplace. These gorgeous sandals. I'm not sure what these ones are called. Uh, in a size 39. Again, a little bit tweaked around the little toe i've had them on the shoe stretcher i've been um, working on these because they're such a great color um, i think they'd be beautiful to wear with jeans and things so i'm just wearing them with a pair of socks around the house to wear them in but this color is just divine a beautiful shoe a beautiful shape but yes not worn uh, because wearing it around the house actually hurts me <laughs> And then last weekend, if you've seen my video, you'll see that I went and bought not one twilly, but three twillies. And I will link that video in the description box below. So that's the extent of my Hermes purchases to date, all without one sales associate, all of them from Brisbane. Oh, I forgot something. I forgot to mention my Calvi duo. Um, this one is in Chev leather in the mauve pale and you can see it has the little duo so it has a little pocket in here where you can put things coins and what have you if you wish and there's a pocket in the back and I bought this one when I was in Sydney with Meredith from the Sydney boutique with her sales associate who's a lovely guy and it's in Chev leather I don't know if you can see that but it's really lovely texture very soft and mushy love it so yeah they're all the things that i have bought so far um not with any one individual sales associate mostly from brisbane one from sydney and obviously the bag from rufa Bourg saint honore boutique in paris um, what's led me to get on to this hermes train 
I have actually been talking with a few of you. A few of you guys. Regular people. Not on the Instagrams much. Not on the YouTubes. Regular people who have reached out to me. You know who you are. You know and we chat a lot. Who have shared with me your experience. And I think my challenge with the whole YouTube experience that um, we hear about on YouTubers videos is it doesn't seem realistic to me to be spending all that money on things that you know people tend to sell off um, that wasn't their style beforehand and it um, I, I just find it not relatable and so to have just regular people like you reach out to me and say hey Dale here's, here's an overview of my experience has been really enlightening and so it's your fault that I am on this journey so to speak and what I learned from those shares is that there are people who've been able to create relationships that are very transparent um, whilst there is some riddle and cryptic kind of discussion. I think there was a breakthrough in communication and I think you sharing your stories um, made it seem more pleasant, I suppose, um, and something worthwhile looking into. And you might ask, well, why are you looking into a tale? Because I love my Birkin so much. I love the colour of it and I have I guess left some breadcrumbs in a few recent videos that I really love the colour of my friend Eileen's that I've seen in a different light but is I believe is exactly the same as Amelia Rose's so if you know Amelia Rose you know what I'm talking about. The Rose Papre um, with the Palladium Hardware. I think that's an awesome, um, awesome colour and also the blue jean colour as well. So for the for the colours in my collection, um, you might say, why not a purple Dale? I don't like any of the purples that I've seen so far and I've got a lot of purple bags. I, my, my interest has been peaked. On that note, I want to tell you, I was going to just, you know, make a funny video about my Hermes journey and what would be on my wish list and then I found some cool pieces and I'm going to share with you what's on my wish list as per my visit to the store on the um, yesterday on the weekend and what I learned about made to order processes for ready to wear which I think is really interesting. So the first thing on my wish list that came to my attention after engaging in these conversations strategically of course was the her H watch uh, and I am looking at the medium size with the mother of pearl face, the diamond markers and the frambois alligator strap. Now this happened to be in boutique when I went yesterday and I tried it on and I'll put some footage in here. What I learned was and what I love about this piece is the fact that there's so many colour options and that I might start with the framboise but I could also get lots of different colours. The pearlescent white looks amazing, the green looked beautiful, um, there's an app you can play with it and you can you know ask for them to be ordered in and I thought that's a really great option. Now I liked the larger style I think it's aimed at men but you know they're all apparently quite unisex um, or for sharing but it didn't have the nice touches like the little diamonds and the mother of pearl face but I did like the larger face and I don't think I took a picture of that one on me. I have added that one uh, to the list of things that I am interested in and again this was just me going through the website going is there anything that I could find that I would like. There's a pair of Iran sandals, I've just told you about how painful they are, they're probably the thing that I would least be interested in but there are some other shoes I'm interested in and this is also based on Mel's shoe review which kind of you know left some markers in my mind and I will link that video below because it's really good. 
these Frenchy 50 ankle boots. She was saying she didn't think they existed anymore with the higher front, but they actually do. Now they are quite the investment at $3,480, but I like the heel height. Um, I love me black boots and I'm looking for a replacement for my Valentino studded boots. So these ones I thought were great because they still had hardware on them. They're still a bit edgy, but they're also very chic. Passifalia tray comes in another style with orchids and it's really beautiful. And I think Connor actually has this one. I thought he bought it for me for a birthday present, but it turned out it was for himself. Not that I would ever expect him to spend that kind of money on me, but still, you know, one can try. And so this little tray, I thought, oh, that's a nice little pair to my existing one for no other reason than to hold trinkets and bits and pieces in my bathrooms because it fits with my bathroom vibe. The final piece that I had before I started talking about bags was this Atreus shirt. Now, they had this in boutique and I did not like the colours. I thought that those highlighted pieces were pinks, but it's actually like a neon-y red orange. So it didn't really work for me. And that kind of minky colour grey also didn't work for me. But here's what I learned about made to order. With these masculine shirts, if you can find five 90 by 90 foulard scarves in any particular season, five... Hermes will do you a custom made to order masculine shirt. That's right. Five scarves. They need to be in your region and they will do you a custom made to order masculine shirt. Now you're talking because after finding this Twilly in my style, I thought just imagine what I could do with a piece of ready to wear, a custom piece of ready to wear. Apparently it takes between four to six months and it costs between six and eight thousand Australian dollars. Now, is that not only a great piece to um, have in your wardrobe, custom Hermes ready to wear, that you actually like, that's not the kind of bland, you know, everyday kind of stuff, but then also a lovely piece to have on your profile, you know. <laughs> This is what I'm thinking. So yeah, I'm going to be looking for some scarves, which I was never looking at before. And um, learning this with my sales associate uh, at the same time was really, really cool. So I've shared with you a watch that's worth about seven and a half thousand, a shirt that let's say it's going to be worth eight. So that's about 15,000. Another pair of Arans, which is about 1,500. So what are we at now? So sixteen and a half thousand. A pair of boots at a three and a half thousand. So that brings us up to twenty thousand dollars, and then a tray for seven hundred dollars. So about twenty one thousand dollars in spending with just things that I like. That's how much a bag costs, right? So one to one. Still a lot of money, but that's without any leather goods without any fashion jewellery, without any fine jewellery. So I feel like it's quite achievable. <laughs> anyway, um, are there things that you think I should look at? Things that you think would be up my alley? If there are, please DM me on Instagram. I'd love to know. This is quite novel and fun and adventurous and crazy. And yeah, I know there'll be people saying, oh, look at you, you backflipped, you changed your mind. Yes, I'm a human. That happens. Happy to cop it, whatever. Yeah. Such is life, right? Definitely share what you think I should be having a look at. Um, I would love to know. Thanks for sticking around this long if you've made it this far. I'll move on from MS content now. <laughs> but um, yeah, it's been nice to kind of share this with you. And let's see where it goes from here. Um, if you've enjoyed it, please give it a thumbs up and consider subscribing if you haven't already. I'd love to see you back for my next video.